Okay guys, I'm just getting ready for a trip from um, Perth to Melbourne. It's going to be about 4,200 kilometers. Um, so I'm just finalizing my gear setup. Done a couple of little bits of upgrades. Um, switched out uh, light proof, went for quad locks. Changed pedals. Um, just testing these out at the moment to see if they're going to be suitable uh, by pedal and invasion and obviously picked up a helmet, uh, Australian laws. So I just got a few things to decide still uh, on my setup. Then one of them is, you know, the medical kit. I've got to basically uh, fine tune it uh, for like ticks and stuff I find and bites, um, insect bites in Australia. So I'll be doing that over the next couple of days. Uh, another thing I'm still deciding on Will I take my pack raft? Um, there's a couple reasons for it and there's a couple reasons against it. It's like one of those things, if I don't take it, I'm going to regret it when I see some amazing coastlines and some amazing water. Um, and then there's going to be times when I'm on a 500 uh, kilometer straight and there's nothing, nothing there at all. So it'd be like, oh, you know, why did I bring it? You know, so still deciding. Um, I picked up the new, what do you call it, uh, longer sea post bag. So this pack wrap fits into it. Um, or I've got the small one, and the small one, what do you call it, um, it's just got some rain gear in it. Now, regarding my setup, um, which I'll go over in detail later on, uh, basically what I've done is categorized everything as usual. Um, one bag, first aid kit, gadgets, sleep system, etc. Um, even with the whole thing fully loaded with food and water, so I'm be able to carry six bottles of water in, in this setup. Even with it fully loaded, I still have 10 liters of space, which is a new thing I'm working on is to be able to carry, have extra space even after I filled the whole thing up uh, with food and stuff. So um, if I do do the pack raft, I will lose about five liters of that space and only have an additional five liters of space. So, uh, I picked up a few things, as I said, I'm still fine tuning it. Um, the other thing I have to decide is what solar panel, and this is what this video is about. So hopefully um, this will save you guys some money. Um, I've been buying solar panels for years, uh, so, certain things I didn't know that I know now that will definitely save you guys some money. Uh, so I started off with um, the reason why I wanted to go solar panel because I knew it'd be bikepacking in hot countries and sun wouldn't be an issue. The other thing was once I get to camp I realized that what he called I maybe want to stay a few days and if I was running a Dyma hub obviously I wouldn't be generating any power so the solar panel for me was a better option. I know people who do bikepacking tours that are using solar panel and Dyna hubs. I know people who are just using Dyna hubs, especially for the racing. I also guys know guys who are just using battery banks because of the technology nowadays. Um, so, but for me, solar panel was the way to go. Like most people, I started off with goal zero. Um, what do I think of goal zero? Okay, um, goal zero is very good at branding i get a little bit closer okay um goal zero is very good at branding okay uh and they're very good at marketing so what is their product like um when i first started researching it i should have watched uh some videos on voltage amps uh 2a 1a um I should have watched that sort of stuff, but I didn't. I just went for the concept of the bigger the solar panel and the more power I get, which now I know is not actually true. So my experience with Goal Zero was, first of all, I paid over $550 for the panel and the battery. Oh. So there's the battery, it's a Shepard 100. Okay, they come in around about $300. Um, and then the panel itself was another $200, with an adapter is another $50. So, um, 
My experience, why do I have two? Actually, I have three of them. Not because I like them. What it is, is uh, basically after three months, this one failed. They sent me a new one, but they wouldn't ship to me in the other or into this country. So I had to get it uh, shipped from the United States, which cost me another 100 So I'm up to about $650 for this system. Um, and then it broke after another six months. And eventually I talked them into send the one. So uh, at this point, I realized Goal Zero is very good at marketing, very good at branding, really good at marketing, really good at branding. But their product, for me, maybe other people will say different, but for me, it's just not great, you know? I wouldn't even take it now with me, um, a Goal Zero product at all, because I don't think it's reliable, um, and it's definitely overpriced. So, um, I decided, uh, after I got the new battery, um, and I was doing some testing with the USB to see what the output is, this is what I didn't realize. The maximum output of this is 2A, 2A, um, this is the maximum output. My phone only can handle 2A, my battery bank can only handle 2A. So the maximum output is 2A, and it's a 20 watts panel. So for me, after, I think it was about a year, the USB part, which is in here, all these things, it stopped working. So this for me is useless now. All we do now is we just keep this one at home and we use it for when the electric goes out to power the Wi-Fi. That's all we do. So for me, uh, definitely not a goal zero product. Um, then started looking at Anchor. All right, this is a, tw um, I believe this one's a 21 watt panel. Um, Anchor has a great reputation. Uh, for their battery bank. This is a 26,000 battery bank and it is well made, reliable, charges my phone 10 times. Now, this one has an output of 3A, but what when you actually test it, what it is is one of the USB outputs is 1A and the other one is 2A. But actually when you run it through the meter, what I found was the best I could get out of it was 1.6 out of the 2A one. So that one um, isn't giving me the maximum, even though it's a 21 watt uh, panel. So at this point, I was talking to a friend and he even told me, well, Anchor doesn't even make the solar panels. I was like, what? He says, yeah, they don't make them. Anchor makes the battery. They just subcontract. They have a supplier in China and they put their logo on. Also the same thing with Gold Zero. Um, Gold Zero have a supplier in China for their uh, solar panels. They do some changes and obviously put their logo on it, um, but they're not specifically factory making solar panels. Um, they're all subcontracted. So at this point, uh, I was talking to a friend and he has basically, he's got himself, um, he has a yacht, and I was down at his yacht and I seen that he had really nice solar panels. And I says, oh, you got new solar panels? He says, no, no, they're four years old. And he says, the mistake what you're doing is you're going to these companies that are targeting the hiker instead of actually going to the people who actually make solar panels. So um, I contacted this company, Link Solar, um, and I ordered the flexible one, all right? Just as, because um, I was looking for something more durable. This can be bent like 5,000 times or some testing. Now, it is bigger, this one, and it is a 12 watt. The output is 2A. I have tested it and it gives me 2A every single time, um, um, especially in the sunlight we have here. Um, so compared to the anchor, it was only giving me 1.6A output. This was giving me 2A output. So it charges the anchor battery, no problem. Charges my phone, no problem. It's um, durable, flexible. This one's four months old, and it still looks brand new. This one is actually a year old, but I stopped using it after about six months. Um, so it's pretty beat up, rust everywhere, and the material and the stitching starting to come out. So 
what, what I realized was um, I didn't need 20 watt panel because at the end of the day, if it's a 20 watt panel or 21 watt panel, the output's still only 2A, you know? So why should I buy a 20 watt when I can get away with a 12 watt or a 15 watt, you know? Um, so that's a thing that um, I didn't realize. Um, at the end of the day, it's what the output is, um, which is important. So now, um, this is great, it's really flexible, it's durable, it's a little bit bigger because it's using a different type of material. Um, so it's a bit of a sacrifice for the, the length. Um, but then the same company made this. And I'll show you this, this is sweet. This is 11 watt by Link Solar. 11 watt panel. The output when I tested using the USB meter was coming out at 2A, which is exactly what my, my battery bank can handle and my phone can handle. My phone can't handle anymore. So I don't need a huge panel. It's very light. I believe it's like, God, I believe it's something like, oh, I gotta remember. I'll have to look it up. I'll make a comment in the description, but it's, it's extremely light. Also, it folds, different texture, 11 watts, 2A output. So it charges my phone, charges my battery in the same time as the Anchor. Actually, that one charges much faster. Um, and previously, before the Gold Zero broke, that was um, um, basically still charging better. So this basically cost $650, okay, not working. Um, solar panel stopped working, replaced three times, wouldn't take it on a trip if you paid me. Anchor, great battery, take the battery everywhere with me, great product. They just don't make the solar panels and you can see the condition of it. It's pretty beat up after four months and it will not give me my full output of 2A. Um, this one is great by Link Solar, a um, little bit too big but obviously because of the different types of material they're using. Um, output is 2A. It'd be great if you had a trailer, put it on the back of a trailer. But this one, oh, um, I believe for the, the anchor, it paid 130 for the anchor, but I've seen them as low as 70. And obviously the battery, I paid over 100 um, in Vietnam for the battery with the charger. Um, this one, this little link, okay, is only $49. So that's $49, gives me my 2A two, uh, two output, really durable. Um, I think that's the way to go. Why pay over $650 and $49 and with the Anchor battery? Now, what I'm doing is um, I got a waterproof, well, semi-waterproof uh, battery bank, it's 5,000. I'm also switched the lights to Nor Nog Light. Love it, it's, got, it's actually a battery bank, so basically I can use, it's a 5,000 uh, milliamp battery bank. I can use this as well um, for charging. Uh, so I'm basically just, solar panels just charging this battery bank, charging my light, and charging my backlight by the same company, Nog. So, and it charges my GoPros and things they got there. So. Hopefully, this is not too long of a video. So um, as I said, I'll get back to packing. But if you're looking to get into solar, 12 watts with 2A output, Link Solar is the way to go. I mean, you can't go wrong. And definitely still go back to the Anchor uh, battery. Uh, take that with you. I mean, you got 10 days worth of charge there for your phone alone. So hopefully that was information was good if you haven't subscribed subscribe have a great week guys